What inspired you to pursue a career in science? When I first was introduced to physics at school, so I was about 13, I decided that that's really what I wanted to do. I think up to that point I had thought I wanted to be a mathematician. But I didn't think of being a scientist. I just thought that that's what I want to study at university. And I wasn't thinking about a career, because at that point women didn't think about careers and girls' schools didn't give you any advice. There's many different leadership styles. Uh, how do you tend to lead your group? Uh, I don't... I've never really sat down and thought about it. I think one has to respond to the individuals and what they need. I hope I'm approachable. I don't think I'm very formal in my style. I think it's a case of being accessible. Certainly, when I was less busy, I could have an open door policy. It's a little difficult now because I'm not around enough. But um, yes, I, I've never analysed a leadership style at all. Is it important for you to mentor young scientists? I think it's very important to support younger scientists, yes. And again, mentoring isn't particularly a word I would use. You just give what you can to people. Um, and that's not just people in my group, that's people in my field. So at conferences now, I try to find out how the, the more junior scientists are getting on and sort of give them encouragement because I know how much that mattered to me. It's being treated as a, a serious scientist, sort of whatever the relative stages are. So I think that is very important. A scientific career can be full of obstacles, but how do you overcome those? One of the things when I talk to younger scientists, particularly, say, graduate students, so people who are really just setting out, is not to assume that someone who looks successful to them has never had setbacks, because I don't believe you'll meet a single person at the top of the, the sort of pecking order who hasn't at some point been kicked in the teeth by failing to get a grant, a position, or, you know, whatever it may be. And I think it's very easy when you're junior to think that people who succeed never had any problems. I think that's very dangerous to believe, because then when they have a problem, they'll think it's just them. Today you have talked about unconscious bias. Can you please explain to us what unconscious bias is? It's internally marking, in this case it would be a woman down, simply for being a woman without sort of evaluating them at all. And the studies that have been done which look at um, how people react to CVs with male and female names shows that just about everyone, man or woman, tends to score the woman less well. And since they're identical CVs, it just shows how conditioned we are to think that the man is somehow superior, regardless of the evidence. And I think it is important to reinforce the message that it isn't just men who suffer from this, women are just as bad. I just want to ask if there's anything else which I haven't asked you, which you would like to, to tell us about. I think it's important to realise how deeply ingrained some of these issues are and how much our society propagates these myths. And I've increasingly come to believe that the problems are so ingrained and the media have a huge amount that they could do instead of you know, pushing the idea that, that women are just there to be attractive and to sell cars or whatever it is. I wish the media would treat men and women more equally. Our cultural messages are very strong.